myself dr santosh singh working as a associate professor in department of physics institute of aeronautical engineering dundigal hyderabad today i am going to discuss about role of nanotechnology in semiconductor optoelectronics actually we are discussing about semiconductor optoelectronics course so what what is what will be the role of nanotechnology because nowadays every people are talking about nanotechnology so what nanotechnology will play the how the nanotechnology will play the important role in the field of semiconductor optoelectronics so first uh, before going to discuss about role of nanotechnology in semiconductor optoelectronics i would like to discuss some basics feature about nanotechnology as a introductory section of nanotechnology so what do you mean by nano scale or nano scale sciences or nanotechnology so nano scale sciences is the the study of object and phenomena at a very small scale roughly 1 to 100 nanometers so once you <coughs> prepared any material in that range means if the material having a dimension in the range of 1 to 100 nanometers so you can say that now your material objective of ob objective material is in nano regime or in you can say it is the nano material so if any material is there, any dimension available in 1 to 100 nano meter range you can say that particular dimension is in nano range why that particular direction because every creature almost have a three dimension so sometimes your material suppose in x direction y direction and z direction so suppose you can able to confine this z direction growth in nano region but other two direction x and y the material will develop like in beyond the 100 nanometer so you can say this material is in nano region along the z direction means this material is confined in the z direction in the nano region so this is a kind of one dimensional nano material where two dimensions are free to grow okay so what is nano scale science to study the of object and phenomena at a very small scale roughly 1 to 100 nanometer is known as nano scale sciences okay so once the your material or any object will be in that dimension and you are going to study their physical behavior or chemical behavior or any property so such type of study is considered as nano science study or nano scale study so 1 nanometer is around 10 to the power minus 9 meter so is small okay so what is nano technology so that is science and if you if you are prepare any material in 1 to 100 nanometer range and you <clears throat> you are able to calculate or observe their optical mechanical or any physical property that all the things are science now you are utilizing that science or that material for technology application is that is the nanotechnology so nanotechnology is the engineering of functional system at the molecular scale so how you can for particular requirement how you can build a particular nano scale material so that you can fulfill your requirement such type of things will comes under the nano technology so here some classification of nano objects or nano materials are given see this is the c60 fullerene and this is the zero dimensional nano material a kind of a, you can say quantum dot or quantum dot is obviously different than fullerene c60 fullerene but here all the three dimension is confined okay let's suppose this is x this is y and this direction is z so in all the possible three direction your material is within the 100 nanometer range so you can see this is the zero dimension zero dimension nano material now this is the single wall nano tube okay so this is the one dimension nano material why because why this is one dimensional nano material because it can grow in single direction okay but other two direction this direction this x and y are confined okay but this 
nano tube a single wall carbon nano tube there are single wall multi wall carbon nano tube so this single wall nano uh, carbon nano tube can grow in this any particular here you can say z direction but other two dimension x and y are confined in the nano region so you can say this is the one dimensional nano object now comes to graphene okay so in graphene you can say this is a kind of sheet okay a kind of layer okay so layer can grow in x and y okay it is free to grow in x and y let's suppose this is x direction so it can be larger beyond the 100 nanometer range because 1 to 100 nanometer range is only considered as a nano scale now this is y so this nano sheet even can grow beyond the 100 nanometer in y direction also but consider the width of that nano sheet okay so that width in z direction is confined in the nano region okay so you can say that is the two dimensional nano structure where only one dimension is confined okay <coughs> in the nano region the next is graphite so actually graphene is come from graphite graphite is a kind of bulk material where layer by layer deposition of graphene are you can exfoliate the graphene from graphite mechanical exfoliation there are one technique in uh, nearly around 2010 or 11 the one british british scientist got a nobel prize for achieving the graphene from graphene just by simple mechanical exfoliation method okay so these graphite here you can say it can be grow even in third direction also so graphite is basically bulk but you can say this is the 3d material so this is 3d means bulk material 2d means one dimension is con confined 1d means two dimension is confined 0d means 0d material means all the dimension is confined so 1d 0d <coughs> all the three dimension is confined 1d means the your material can grow in one direction other two direction is confined so confinement direction and growth direction of material is different so this nomenclature 1d 2d 3d depends on the growth of the material if the material can grow only in the one direction that is your 1d material if material can grow in the two direction and only one particular direction is confined in the nano region you can say that is 2d structure not nano nano structure that particular direction you can say that is in nano region this graphite is bulk material you can say because all the three possible your material can grow in all the possible three directions so what is the interesting fact about nanotechnology a new form of carbon with cylindrical nano structure the nanotube was discovered around 1991 Nanotube have a novel property means that nano structure have a novel property excluding or including extraordinary strength and unique electrical and optical property. Their electrical and optical property is different than different than their bulk counterpart. These mechanical and electrical properties make a nanotube potentially useful in many various applications from electronic to cloths and sports gear so these nanofibers nanotechnology are also used in textile industry okay so nano science not just one science it includes a biology chemistry physics material science and engineering that's why nanotechnology if you merge all these branches of science and you are studying at the nano scale nano scale means you are studying the object object behavior at 1 to 100 nanometer re regime means are at molecular level if you are go to molecular level and you are just considering the properties of one single molecule or one atom so such type of study will come under the uh, nano science or nanotechnology okay
So physical properties of nano material. So nano size condensed matter exhibits some remarkable specific property that may be significantly different from the physical property of bulk material. Means suppose you are taking zinc oxide as a bulk and zinc oxide as a nano structure. So that nano structure of same material will show some different property than their bulk counterpart, and that property is even better than. Bulk counterpart somehow. Okay, so what will be the reason behind these uh, occurring of such remarkable behavior or such significant property? Once you grow the material in their nano shape, so there are basic four reason. The large fraction of surface atom. Once you go in the nano scale, all the atoms will be available. Means. Most number of atom will be available on the surface. Okay, so their reactivity or other electrical behavior will be increased. Obviously, they will be more reactive. They will be more response. They they will give more response by for changing any conditions. Okay, now large surface energy. If the more number of atom will be available on the surface, so their surface energy will be also large. Spatial confinement. That confinement, once you you are restricting restricting the growth of the any material in particular direction, due to that restriction, the band structure of the material will change, and due to the change of band structure, if everything will be changed, means their electronic optical behavior will be changed. And further, once you grow the bulk material, there will be a lot of possibility for imperfection. But once you create a one nano Scale part uh, material or nano material, there will be the less chance of imperfection. So all these four reasons behind the remarkable property of nano material. So some uh, example of remarkable properties of nano materials are lower melting point or phase transition temperature. Their phase transition become lower, and their melting point become lower. Reduce the lattice constant. The lattice constant size will reduce. Enhance the mechanical property. It means their mechanical strength will increase. Different optical property. So once the band structure will change, obviously every electronic and optical property will change. Higher or lower electrical conductivity depends on your requirement. You can uh, develop your nano structure for higher and lower electrical conductivity. Different magnetic property enhance chemical reactivity. All such things. Means totally different behavior. Different behavior will show by nano objects for same material comparison to their bulk counterpart. So many such property of size dependent property of nano structure material can be tuned considerably by simply by adjusting the size, shape, and extent of agglomeration. Okay. So once these property are Size dependent property, so size dependent. So in quantum mechanics, you know that once the particle is confined in the region A, and this quantum mechanical particle of mass m is confined in the infinite potential wall, and that potential is extended up to x is equal to zero to x is equal to a. So this particle have energy E is equal to n square h plus h square upon 2 ml square. Kind of this formula you are very familiar. Okay. So what is L? Are in term of A. This A is region of confinement. From x is equal to zero to x is equal to A, your particle is confined. Now this particle cannot move beyond the x is equal to A to x. Is X is equal to zero to x is equal to a. It can be always be there. Means in that region, x is equal to zero to x is equal to a. So in term of a, you can write here a square. So once this a will become very very small, what is this energy level of this particle? Okay, on the energy axis. So this is the first energy level e one, e two, e three. What happen if you are reducing it? The corresponding energy levels will change. Okay, 
they will shift it to their higher energy state okay so uh, these energy levels will only create the valence band or conduction band so once these levels will change obviously the band gap value the position of valence band conduction band all will change and due to the transition of electron from valence band to conduction band then again it will return from conduction band to valence band such type of transition will govern the optical property either by absorption or emission of photon emission emission absorption of photon once the electron will absorb the photon and jump from valence band to conduction band and while returning time they will emit the photon so that uh, that is emission that is ab absorption these two things is only the optical properties of material so based on the conduction band position top of the conduction band and based on the bottom of the conduction uh, top of the valence band and the bottom of the conduction band these absorption will occur these material will response over the electromagnetic spectrum what type of electromagnetic spectrum will activate the absorption process so all these things will govern by the based on electronic structure means position of valence band and conduction band so see once you are rest restricted the growth of the material means you are confined the particle at a very very, very narrow region these even e2 e3 are up to en positions will be changed okay these energy level position will be shifted to the higher energy so correspondingly the band structure of the material will change and if the band structure will change their electronic behavior their optical behavior every behavior will be changed okay so the for higher catalysis or gas sensor high surface to volume ratio is responsible conducting material and sensor the low pro low percolation threshold is responsible okay so like that improved re reliability and fatigue resistance electronic components and m in me ms type of electronic circuit the property of nano material such property will be huge okay so low melting and sintering temperature property will be useful for material processing and low temperature sintering material improved atomic transport and kinetics inside the nano material will be useful for batteries and hydrogen storage increasing resistivity with decreasing grain size will be useful for electronics passive component and sensor low percolation threshold property will be used for conducting material and sensor increasing hardness or wear resistance with decreasing grain size will be useful for hard coating and protective layers okay so all these things i just uh, gave a example for nano material uh introduction of nano material how the nano material will be useful for any technological application so in semiconductor optoelectronic the band structure for semiconductor is very very important and band structure is generally categorized by valence band and conduction band these valence band and conduction band consist with several energy levels so these energy level let's suppose this is e1 e2 e3 e4 like that so these energy level how these energy levels will come these levels will come by the formula en is equal to n square h square upon 2 ma square where a is the region of confinement for any particle x is equal to 0 to x is equal to a so once this a will decrease what happen this en is inversely proportional to a square so once this a will decrease this e energy levels will shifted towards the higher energy so all these levels will shifted means position of valence band and conduction band will shift okay so what happen once the position of conduction band and valence band will shift 
let's suppose the earlier the top of the valence band is here at energy level e1 and bottom of the conduction band is here at the energy level e2 okay now the position of these energy levels will be shifted okay so now it is go to some e1 dash and this is shifted towards the e2 dash now difference between e2 minus e1 is known as eg for earlier case but in the bulk counterpart e2 dash minus e1 dash will be now new band gap of the material now band gap is a, a responsible for absorption process why because we are discussing the up to electronic behavior what will be the response of electron once it will be exposed by electromagnetic wave or electric field and that electric field will come by kind of electromagnetic wave like light or anything okay so these absorption or emission process will completely change once you go from bulk to nano range so i will discuss some more part about nanotechnology for today video lecture it's you know thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates